Okay, um, this evening I want to look at, as I said, how to stand and help others stand. Amen. Um, one of my favorite verses in the, in the Gospel of John is not by the Lord Jesus Christ, but by John the Baptist. Yeah. He said, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, he must increase, but I must decrease. Now that's an imperative. Now an imperative in language means it's something that must be done. It's not optional, it's not something that you can maybe do if you please. John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. And the Lord cannot increase in a person, in a church, in a fellowship, in a life, in a family, unless we decrease. And the more we increase, the more he decreases. It's like the old uh, um, uh, recording materials, the old uh, amplifiers and stuff, you used to have the sliders. And I know it's all digital these days and AI and all the rest of it, but you could take the sliders and you could get all different kinds of responses in the system by how you arrange the sliders. And generally, if you increase the bass, you decrease the treble. And if you decrease the bass, you increase the treble until you got to that right place. But the church at Corinth was a messed up church. And one of the things that messed up, as we saw the last few weeks, is the fact that they were into these different groups that they followed. I am a Paul, I am a Paulus, I am a Cephas, I am of Christ. And that's one of the things that made the church at Corinth so bad. Very bad. Now, the greatest job, I believe, of any pastor, preacher, evangelist, or whatever you want to call it, is not so that people will follow you, but that they will follow Jesus. Amen. And the more they follow you, the more they will not follow Jesus. And the reason why is we find out in this passage of Scripture. Paul starts off in verse number one, and he says that I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I, uh, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What did Paul want for the church at Corinth? Did he want great preachers, great evangelists? Did he want this group following this guy and his YouTube messages and all the rest of it? No. He said, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech and words and wisdom. I came so that your faith might stand in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's a wonderful thing when you get saved. Amen. Amen. But after you get saved, the Bible expects that we will grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord so that the time will come we will not be just those who are being taught but those who will teach. And when you teach and reach other people you've got to make it so that their faith stands not in you but in Jesus. If you make a group of a church of people follow you or your leader, when that leader passes on or leaves or goes away, you're going to be left with nothing except old videos and old tapes, you know, that you can watch on YouTube or whatever you like. But you see, Paul came, he wanted them to stand not in somebody, but in someone, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is essential to have a biblical standard of leadership in reaching others so that they get the proper foundation. You build a building anywhere. What's the most important thing in that building? The foundation. If you have an improper foundation, you're built on sand, you're built on wobbly ground. If, 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 it, if it starts to go like this, you're in a mess. And it's true when Paul, in dealing with the issues at Corinth, the first thing he has to get people realizing is that the people need to stand not following a man, but following the Lord and following Scripture. Amen. It is too easy, we saw this last week, 
for us to be identified by our following a man rather than following the Lord. It's easier for you to line up what you believe with a man than it is to follow and line up with the Lord. Amen. You see, men are just men and they're fallible. They can, they can get things wrong. They can do things wrong. Um, this is why you have to be extremely careful not to follow a man or have a church follow a man. Doesn't matter how good a preacher he is. If he's a really good preacher and the right kind of preacher, he's going to be pointing you to the Lord, not to his DVD deal, Amen. not to his book deal, Amen. not to his retirement fund, <laughs> not to his mansion or his airplane or anything like that. He's going to want you to put the right foundation. And this is what Paul did in the middle of all this. He said, when I came, I did not come with excellency of speech. Now, you have to understand, Paul was a trained orator. He was not some guy who was average. He was extremely smart. He went to the school of Gamaliel. He was a smart man. He could have come with all kinds of big words and baffled the people there. He probably spoke at least five or six languages. At least. Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, Latin, maybe a few other Syrian language. He was a smart guy. But Paul says, when I came, I did not come on the basis of the excellency of my speech. And you've got to be careful that our preaching is not based on stirring oratory. Now, there are, and this, this is why I'm very careful in the music that we sing in our church. You can get a musical melody carry along and make you emotional and have no foundation in it whatsoever. That's why the devil uses music, by the way. Music can stir up your spirit. It can make you do things you would never do. That's the power of music. So Paul wanted to make sure that the, the, the foundation that these people had was not because Paul was a smart guy or Paul was the apostle of the apostles. There are some people who say that, well, you know, Paul is our apostle and you can only read certain books of the New Testament that belong to us and the rest you just ignore, like Hebrews, James, the Gospels and things like that. But the Bible says clearly all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for instruction, for correction. Amen. All scripture. All scripture may not be written directly to us, but we can profit from all scripture. Amen. If you understand the context, who it was written to, why it was written. I mean, for instance, the book of Hebrews, right? Who is the book of Hebrews written to? Well, that was, that was written to the, 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 the tribulation saints. The clues in the title. He Hebrews. It was written to the believing Hebrews. Amen. That's why men should make the tea, because Hebrews. But during the first part of the growth of the New Testament church, the vast majority of people in the church were Hebrews. Jewish people. And as the church went on, it became more and more Gentile and things like that. And then we went to Antioch and becomes uh, the first called Christians at Antioch. But Paul says, even though I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee of the Pharisee, of the tribe of Benjamin, he, in Philippians, he, he gave his lineage, if you like. And that doesn't impress me, but it should probably impress the people who were Jewish at that time. But Paul says, I did not come to you with excellency of speech. The word excellency means that something that is elevated above the normal. You know, you can go to churches like that and they talk like they have marbles in their mouth. <laughs> They'll talk about the inebriated with exuberance of verbosity. <laughs> and you're like, wow, he can really speak big words. 
but it won't do you any good. Paul would rather say a few things simply than many things and confuse people. That's why, for instance, as we get later on in his book, he talks about speaking in tongues. He said, I would rather speak five words with my understanding than 10,000 in an unknown tongue. Just, just, just for the fun of it, every once in a while, I, I will watch the service from Bible Baptist Church in Cebu, the Philippines. Every once in a while. They have about eight hours ahead of us and they have services on Wednesday and Sunday. It can be interesting. And the preachers there are really good. And they'll say something really good and then go, What? <laughs> Sorry, I don't speak Tagalog or whatever it is. And then he'll, he'll, be, he'll say something really good and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, it doesn't benefit. And I'm not criticizing, but I'm saying I don't understand it doesn't do me any good. And if, if I, as a preacher, speak words that don't help you, what possible good is it? I would rather speak four or five words that people could understand and say, I, I get it, than impress you with my intellect or my words or anything less. He says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. You know one of the greatest things you can do is give your testimony. There have been more people saved through our testimony than many other things, I think. Because you see, I can get up here and people say, well, there's that preacher, he's preaching. But if someone hears your testimony, how you were saved. Ross in New York. That's a long way to go to get saved, amen. But I'm glad you got saved. That's a wonderful thing. And it's a wonderful thing to give and have a testimony. But Paul said, I would rather be simple and be heard and be intelligent and not be heard. He talked about the, the testimony of God. You see, human wisdom, the Greeks were, were great for it. They loved their wisdom. They loved their big words. They loved to amaze people. If you went to Athens, as Paul did, they loved about their idols. We, we, we met a woman this afternoon who um, told us that we are really poor Christians because we have only one God and she has thousands of them. She was a pagan. Yeah. And it's like, if you have a thousand devils, that's better than the one true God. But I'd rather have the one true God than 10,000 demons, amen. amen. And I would rather have one sentence that people understood than 10,000 sentences that is completely un not understandable. Human wisdom, the gospel should not hear about human wisdom. Now as part of that, now I want you to pay very close attention to this. As part of that, preaching should not be the preacher's opinions, but the word of God. It should not be the preacher's prejudices and evil thinking. It should be the word of God. What did Paul tell Timothy in 2 Timothy? Preach the word. I've heard and I've seen for myself that people who have gone to a church and, 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 and our church at the time had an American pastor and they got saved and they were Scottish guys and they said they were called to preach and as they started preaching they developed an American accent. And they would use American colloquialisms. And they would start to look like they were Americans. Now that might be nice for them, and that might be nice for the American pastor, but as, as one colored preacher heard, heard I say many years ago, he just said, if I try to be what I'm not, I mess up what I am. <laughs> if you think that you being a preacher or a pastor or whatever, and they entitles you to taking on the prejudice, the speech, and become a clone of another country, then you're not being who God saved. Amen. You're being somebody else. 
And the object is not to make you an American version of a Christian or an American version of a preacher. God calls preachers and God calls you with, with the abilities you have and the person you are for his glory and honor. If you try to be something you're not, you're going to mess up what God called. Think about that. God did not call me to be an American preacher. Amen. I'm glad of that. God called me to be a Scottish preacher. Amen. Now, you all understand that I came here today to preach the word of God to you. <laughs> That's not what God called me to do. Amen. But yet there are so many people that follow that, imitate that, and think that is biblical and godly, and it is not. Amen. And the reason why is because the person who is standing upon that is standing upon a false foundation. God calls us in whatever state we are. And I'm not talking about the state of the union. If you are saved and God has saved you as a Scotsman or as a Polish man, that's what God expects you to be. And Paul could have come and said, I could make you a Jewish Hebrew clone or I can make you a follower of Jesus. And God wants us to be followers of Jesus. When one is called to preach, they're not called to give their opinions, their prejudices, their ideas. They're there to preach and expound the word of God. Amen. You're not to be, and, and, and I, I hate to even say this. I really do. But I would, I would, I would want to die. If a group of people started going around and saying, well, I'm, I'm a McLennanite. <laughs> Don't ever do that. <laughs> I would never want that. Well, I'm following brother. I'm a, I'm a McLennanite. I'm a real Bible believer. <laughs> Don't you ever do that. <laughs> no, no. God <laughs> saves us. And calls us as we are. Amen. Using us. And uses us as we are. And the reason why he does that is because the people we reach, we want them to stand in the right foundation and not because they're trying to imitate us. I see it so many times. Young guys, will, especially, they'll get saved, they'll go to a church where maybe they have an American pastor and they'll start becoming Americans. They'll start eating like them, dressing like them, talking like them. That's not the proper foundation. Amen. Paul said, when I came, I, I didn't come with my excellency of speech, my, my, my mind, my intellect. He said, I came with the testimony of God. Exactly. He was a messenger. But look what he says in verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. This, to the, is, this is to the church who followed Apollos, who po followed Peter, who followed Jesus, they said, who followed Paul. Paul said, the only thing I want to know about you is Jesus. That's it. I don't want to, don't want to know whose DVD deal you have, whose YouTube channel you follow, or who, you know, this, that, and the other. I want to know about Jesus in your life. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to come to church and people say, tell me about Jesus. Oh no, I, I've, I've read this book by brother so and so and, and I'm a real Bible believer because I've read his book. What about Jesus? Well, I don't know about him, but I know about brother so and so. I've got his book. I've got his study Bible. What about Jesus? What do you know about him? You see, John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Whenever you have a preacher, a leader, increase you know that Jesus Amen. is decreasing mm -hmm. whenever you have a church that say well to be one of us you must follow our leader that leader is increasing but Jesus is decreasing Amen. if someone comes in and says that's a that's a McLennanite church 
That means Jesus is decreasing. Exactly. This is what they do in the Catholic Church. They elevate the Pope. And when the Pope is elevated, Jesus is decreasing. The job of any true called of God, pastor, preacher, is to get Jesus increased and then decreased. And whenever that is reversed, Jesus decreases. That's why Paul said, when I came to you, the only thing I want to know is not who you follow. What has Jesus done in your life? Isn't that supposed to be what church is all about? Amen. About Jesus? Amen. Didn't Jesus say, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me? Amen. Our job is not to make McLennanites. It's to bring people to Jesus. Amen. Now, it doesn't matter. Now, you, who, you know what I'm talking about. But it, it could be any guy. Any guy. If they're elevated, Jesus goes down. And any church where Jesus is not exalted but put down is not a church we should have anything to do with. Amen. Because I would rather have Jesus elevated and every man, every man, every woman, every child put down so that Jesus can come up. Because the Bible says one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that's why Paul said, we, our, our, our faith should not stand in, in human wisdom, our prejudices, our pride, our philosophies, our nationalities, but upon the word of God. Amen. Amen. I did not come back here to Scotland to start an American church. <laughs> Full stop. Amen. I did not do that. And I would hate for this. To be an American church. This is not American church. Amen. This is a Scottish church. Amen. This is a Polish church. This is, I think, an international church. church. Amen. Lord. It's a Lord's church. We are to adopt in our preaching that which uplifts and exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And if you'll do that, it will have an effect in your life. Now, I find this an amazing admission by the Apostle Paul in verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear, much trembling. Oh, that's, a, that's an awful lot of honesty, isn't it? Yes. Paul, the great apostle, the super apostle, to infinity and beyond. Paul says, when I, when I, when, now I wonder to myself, what was, it, what was it about this church that made Paul this way? That he came in weakness and in fear and much trembling. In case he's had Exactly right. In case what he had done and the preaching he had done was all in vain. Because he did not want this church to be built on men but upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't want a church where they could turn back and say, look, there's the Paulite church. He wanted to turn around and say, that church is the, 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 the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came in weakness. Now, preachers aren't supposed to be weak. Amen? Amen. They're supposed to be uh, perfect and without fault. And six feet six tall. And wear cowboy boots. And a Stetson hat. Sunglasses. And of course the sunglasses. Paul said, I came in weakness. And in fear, much trembling. Look at verse number four. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit, of the spirit and of power. You know how he had the spirit of the Holy Spirit in his ministry and the power of, the God, of God in his ministry? Because Paul was down there and Jesus was up there. Yeah. One of the biggest problems in many churches today, it's all about some man yeah. instead of about the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in what used to be Debbie's home church in America many years ago, uh, one of the things they did, and I, and I understand why they did it, but I didn't appreciate it, I didn't like it. 
and we didn't stay in that church for very long, is around, it was a big church, probably a church had room for about three or 4,000 people, a very large church. And around all the windows and all the aisles, they had these pictures of these great preachers. And I thought to myself, those are just men. Why are we not uplifting the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Now, I like to read about great preachers and the things they did about missionaries and things like that. I like to read about David Livingstone and, and others who went to the mission field, did wonderful works, uh, uh, Hudson Taylor and people like that. I like to read about that. But I want to know about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you met these people in real life, they tell you about Jesus. Any time a church or a group of churches or a preacher starts talking about themselves or their leader, they're not talking about Jesus. Wow. Yeah. What business do we have on the face of this planet yeah. to talk about any preacher yeah. apart from the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why are we not exalting Jesus? Why are we not talking about Jesus and what he has done? You see, the problem is when you start talking about a man or a system or a book or, the, or, or a YouTube deal or whatever, you find the foundation of that church or those people is on that man yeah. instead of Jesus. And that's a very dangerous place to be. Because as soon as that man goes, that church goes. Mm -hmm. right. I have been saved for a very long time. I have been in Scotland for a very long time. Uh, God uh, called me back here uh, to, to preach in 1988. And before that, I spent all my life in Scotland, apart from maybe six years in America before that, where I went to Bible college and all that kind of stuff. But I have seen many people come and go and start Bible-believing churches here in Scotland. Do you know how many are still here from then? Zero. Zero. There used to be a time here in this country where there's over 20 Bible-believing churches. Here in Scotland. A couple in Glasgow. Edinburgh. Dundee. Stirling. Where are they going? The preacher left... And the church died. Wait a minute. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. So if a church is built on a preacher, a system, a leader, it's not Jesus' church. church. Exactly. It's their church. Amen. Here's what happens. And this is why Paul did this in verse number five. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. That's it right there. Right, right there. You follow any man instead of following Jesus. Oh, well, but my follower, he follows Jesus too. He just happens to be a, a, you know, a, 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 a person who is prejudiced, who's, who's a racist, who, who thinks abortion is fine. But he's, 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 he's a real man of God. You're telling me your, your faith is not in, in the Lord, it's in a man. Amen. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That means there's a choice. Yeah. You can either be built upon the wisdom of men, the personality of men, the preaching of men, the prejudices of men, or you can be built on the power of God. You can't have both. You can't have any man exalted in a church and Jesus exalted at the same time. Yeah. Again, John the Baptist, he must increase, I must decrease. That's not a choice. If Jesus is to increase in this church, that means me and you must decrease. Mm -hmm. It should get to the point where we're wondering, I wonder what the Lord has for us this week. Yeah. Not well, Pastor John preach a good message, mm -hmm. an on fire message. What would the Lord have for us? One of Debbie's, uh, De Debbie's. De Debbie's favorite verses, and the reason why it's famous is because in many churches, we used to have it in our church in Edinburgh, used to be a little sign on the pulpit, and I don't have it in this one yet, and maybe I should have it up here. 
And a little, a little text, I believe it's from Luke. It says, sir, we would see Jesus. You're not here tonight to see me. Amen. Amen. Here to see Jesus. Yeah. And if your faith is built on me, it will fall. Right. And if you, as a leader and a reacher of other people, your idea is to make them a follower of your preacher guy, then their fa faith is built on a wrong foundation. Yeah. It's sinking sand. It will disappear. This is what Paul was afraid of. This is why he came in weakness and in fear and much trembling because he did not want this church to be following him. Amen. Yeah. Every preacher who has people who are following him because he's so wonderful, so charismatic, has the cowboy boots and the hat and the sunglasses, should hit the altar, fall flat on their face, and repent of their sin. 24-7. <laughs> because the worst thing you could ever do for another Christian is have them follow a man instead of following Jesus. Amen. You've got to follow Jesus. Amen. And this is why Paul starts to bring his word for this church to help fix the church. And you cannot be fixed if you're still doing the things that unfixed you. You cannot have God work in your life if you're deciding to let the devil work in your life. John the Baptist, again, he must increase, I must decrease. If you're going to have the things in Corinth fixed about their, their different groups following different people, you're going to have to get them back down to the basics. And that's following Jesus. Do not ever become in your life a McLennanite. Amen. Amen. Or a Walkerite. Amen. Or a Figatzite. Be a follower of Jesus. Because he's the only one worthy to be following. I care more about what Jesus has for me than I care about some preacher of the past. Now, I have a lot of preachers that I, I've listened to in the past and they've been a blessing to me and, and they've been an encouragement and they've been a help. But I want to focus upon Jesus and what he can do for me and what he can do for us. And that foundation is the correct foundation so that people's faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, the personality of men, the prejudice of men, the pride of men, the pattern of men, or pleasing men, but in God. In the power of God. And that's why Paul was afraid. Because he was so afraid of this church standing on a man or men instead of Jesus. Our job is not to make people into Americans. Our job is not to make them into McLennanites, Walkerites, or anything else, or Clarkites. Our job is to get people to follow Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the study in this word. We thank you, Lord, it can teach us so much about how we should prepare, how we should try to lead people to Jesus, and then keep them following Jesus and not following us. Bless us, work our hearts, Lord, glorify your name through us.